Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be going over skin substitutes for wounds. But first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it truly does help my channel grow. So what are skin substitutes? Okay, so skin substitutes are either artificial or biological uh, materials that provide either temporary or permanent cover to exposed wounds, okay? So over time, these materials can restore the skin's function. Since skin is the largest organ in the human body, it consistently interacts with the external environment. It is um, susceptible to damage and wounds. So this skin substitutes can minimize complications and um, speed up wound healing, okay? They work very well for pressure ulcers, burns, um, skin disorders, wounds that have um, issues with like arterial flow, so blood flow to that area, um, trauma. So skin substitutes replace the properties of normal functioning skin um, and can enable healing, providing effective solutions to difficult healing wounds. Okay, so really they are for wounds that are really struggling to heal. So there are two different types of um, skin substitutes, okay? So there can be temporary or permanent. So the temporary skin substitutes, they provide an ideal wound environment for up to four weeks, okay? So they protect the wound bed, um, provide moisture to that area for up to four weeks, and then it needs to be removed. Now, the permanent ones, they do remain on the wound site, improving skin quality um, at that site, okay, and they do remain on. So for the temporary skin substitutes, you can either have natural or a synthetic skin, okay? So the natural skin substitutes is prepared and processed from live cells. Um, so human amnion, this is a the, the membrane that covers the fetus. It's prepared from those cells. Um, human allograft, um, this is the preferred um, skin substitute and it's made from human cadavers. Um, you also can use pig skin, Oasis wound matrix. Those are all natural skin substitutes. Now the synthetic, so these are artificial um, and they are created to meet specific wound requirements. So really what they're doing is providing a moisture, protecting the wound bed, allowing them to heal, okay? Um, so there is two different kinds here. The bio brand, this is three layers. It does have pores and it has a water layer um, and it allows, so the pores allow um, exudate removal, um, antibiotic application, and the water layer provides moisture. Okay, then we have transite. So this is a double layered non poured outer. So you have an outer silicone layer. Um, and then the inner layer is lined with a neonatal fi uh, fibroblast. Okay. So for the permanent skin substitutes, we do have three different kinds. Um, the epical now, this is permanent skin substitute from cultured skin biopsy of the outer layer of skin of the patient, okay? So normally this is taken from the thigh um, and they will, they will culture the skin and replace it over top of the wound, okay? Um, alloderm, so this is the outer layer of skin from a human cadaver. Uh, Integra, this is the inner dermal layer, um, and it joins um, existing wound cells, promotes um, cell growth, and the building of new blood vessels. So what are the benefits of skin substitutes? So skin substitutes, they do um, accelerate wound healing, so they speed up the healing process. Um, minimize infection, minimize complications, and minimize dehydration because we always want that 
moist wound environment to heal a wound. So it does uh, prevent a wound from being dehydrated. Now these materials also offer a cosmetic benefit. So it actually maximizes the ability of that area to move. So the flexibility of the wound. Now at after a few weeks, because for the first few weeks, um, to allow it to adhere to that area, you have to be very, very cautious and not move that area. Uh, but once it is healed, it does give maximum benefit to that area. Um, skin substitutes are ideal for non-healing or difficult to heal wounds. So what are the indications for using skin substitutes? So they're normally considered um, when a patient has superficial, partial, or deep burn wounds that are chronic or non-healing, okay? Um, so other indications that, that we might use a skin substitute for is partial thickness burns, um, diabetic foot ulcerations, acute or chronic wounds, uh, venous stasis ulcerations, traumatic wounds, and arterial ulcerations. So really, any time we have wounds that are going to take a long time to heal, they're either chronic, non-healing, that's when we start considering um, skin substitutes for use. So there are some considerations that we need to be um, just aware of before using skin substitutes. So when a patient gets a skin substitute, they do have to minimize movement to that area for at least the first two weeks to allow proper healing. So we have to make sure that that patient can do that. Um, we want someone who will adhere to medicine and treatment therapies, um, at, have adequate nutrition and adhere to the wound care plan um, because Skin substitutes are not just something that is readily, like readily available. It does take time to do. Um, so we want to make sure that we are optimizing actually using these, um, these substitutes. Um, so that's all I have for this video. I hope you did find it helpful. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.